Hello everyone, my name is Marcel with Cybergate Studio and we're going to talk about uh, something different this time. Um, this is kind of a direction I want, I'd like to take the channel into, but you'd have to go ahead and give me feedback. So as you watch this, go ahead and go down in the comment section, give me some feedback. What do you think about uh, these kinds of maybe tutorials, these kind of discussions, um, just these kind of videos in general. Um, today I want to go ahead and show how to remotely or how to configure maybe a Linux, uh, you know, an extra Linux computer or um, a VM or uh, essentially a clean Linux installation, how to enable it to connect remotely. So right now uh, I am using VNC to connect to this virtual machine. I didn't give it a ton of resources, so it may not be um, the most responsive in the world. But this is Ubuntu, as you can see right here, 16.04 uh, uh, long-term service, or LTS. Um, I love Linux. I use it all the time at work. So the Ubuntu is a really nice, uh, actually extremely popular, um, was the most popular distribution of Linux for basically just casual users. Um, it's very approachable. Anybody can use it. You just you know, install it like any other operating system. You just a whole bunch of clicks of next. You don't have to compile anything from source to get it to work. I can uh, make another video if you want. Comment below. Let me know if you, if you want any more uh, videos on this, like just different aspects. So what is Linux used for? Um, what kind of enterprise things are it's, is it good for? What kind of things can I do with it at home? Uh, can I revive my old you know, desktop with it or laptop with it? What uh, how it is? I'm probably going to do a video on how it, uh, maybe you might could replace your Mac OS or maybe even Windows with it. Um, so that's those some things that are coming in the future. But today, let's VNC has is kind of bad about lag. Um, if your network's not like perfect, uh, it's very likely that you can start having some duplicate uh, commands or like uh, entries into your keyboard. So say I hit J, and you know if if my network was was bad or you know the server's running slow or something it would, I'd hit J once and it would basically just do that as if I just hit it a whole bunch of times anyway so the, the fastest way to do this in my opinion is to go ahead and go straight to terminal and this is actually why I love um, Linux so much is terminal gives you so much power this, uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, a sudo apt get install and we're gonna do sshd server so what we're gonna do first is SSH. Um, that's so that you can connect to. Oops, hello. No, it's not SSHD. Seriously? Is it not a server? It's just SSHD. Really? Oh, okay. Uh, it, it's SSHD server on either SSH or SSHD server on uh, CentOS, so I got a little backwards, but all right. Um, so what you just saw there, I went ahead and did apt-get install. Uh, that's just the package manager. That's like uh, going to an app store and downloading. Um, SSH is the file name. You know, th these are all picked up from different repositories online. You can subscribe to new repositories uh, and then be able to install things. It, this is a nice, easy way to get that installed. So. Um, so sudo gives you root user permissions so that you don't just break things by uh, being root all the time. So it's like a super user, it's um, administrative access. Uh, install, actually let's come back up here and show off the different portions. So I already said sudo is the, kind of the root user. apt-get is kind of the, the package manager. That's how you install things uh, in this version. There's also pip, there's yum. Um, I'm sure there's others that I'm not thinking of off the top of my head. Install, you know, you can do uh, install, upgrade, update. You know, there's different things, um, different commands you can give it. And then SSH is the package that you actually want to, uh, or the, yeah, the, it's what you want to install. So um, this goes ahead, see how it says, okay, reading the package list, building dependency trees. So it says, I need, you know, SSH has this, it's this package and it runs, but it also needs these other things that you may not have, which for example, I didn't have all of this. There you go. Open SSH server. That's what I needed. That's what I was thinking of. Um, so all of this needs needs to be installed, including all of this stuff. So then it comes down here and says, okay, uh, five newly or five new things will be installed, and 240 
our, our packages on my on my Linux computer or on this VM that needs to be upgraded, that's going to be a symptom of the fact that this uh, this ISO is not super old but a little old. So I, I I could do some updates. This is a fresh install. Anyway, so then it comes through here and it says, okay, you will need you know 5.2 gigs roughly, or I mean megabytes of additional disk space. Are you okay with that? Do you want to download and install it? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, then it goes and does it. Um, so now I can say service SS. Oh, dang it. See, this is the beauty of VNC. It's starting to already crap out. Uh, let's go ahead and do it if, if it'll work. I just already typed in IF. Let's see how long it takes. Maybe it just didn't. There it goes. Okay. Come on. Oh, almost. We're almost there. All right, forget it. So here's great. So we installed SSH. Um, hopefully it's running now. Uh, and so one way we can test is if I minimize this, go ahead and bring up my, um, I personally use remote NG. So I'm going to move that out of view to show just what the, the terminal will be like via SSH to my tutorial VM. I actually named it that way. So this right here is going to come up when it does putty. Um, this is saying that, okay, we need to go ahead and uh, swap SSH keys to kind of give a good, uh, you know, give, basically give it a trusted handshake. So you say yes, and that way now, you, oop, hello. I did not put in the password correct. Okay. Is there a lag? Am I doing this bad? Let's try that. Oh, you know, I may not have given it. I didn't give it root access. Duh. Okay, so I, I haven't, so you have to, uh, oop, hello. That would be my server. Okay, so this is, all right, so now we are connected to uh, the VM. Oops, sorry, hit the mic. Um, it went and gave some details here. Looks like it can already. It needs to be updated. Uh, so, but here we are. We're in our Linux computer, and we can now have the command line to run commands, which is fantastic because that means. Notice how before I type anything and things would go crazy. Now I have really, really clean, easy typing experience. It's just, there's no latency, no lag. It's not duplicating letters. SSH is significantly better than VNC, in my opinion, if you're doing terminal. Um, and then I can still do sudo su to get into uh, root user if I wanted it, um, or I could just stay in tutorial or my, my home directory. Uh, let's see. So, you know, yeah, this looks like I'm in the home directory right now, or root directory right now. Actually, where am I? Yep, I'm in my home user directory. Duh, I shouldn't have done that. So that's how that works. Okay, so uh, to, to continue on, let's go ahead and look at um, installing, what was next? Oh yes, let's go ahead and do, so let's say you actually want the user interface, right? You want to be able to remote desktop just like you would in any other type of environment. So, or in, in Windows really, Linux doesn't have remote desktop. So or at least not, you know, it's usually used VNC, um, but there is something called XRDP and that is a wonderful, uh, basically remote desktop piece of software to mimic uh, Microsoft's remote desktop capability, you can do this. So you want sudo apt get install and you want xrdp and it'll just go ahead and find that, install it, and this will take a few minutes but the xrdp will essentially behave the same way remote desktop or rdp does uh, it's in a, almost um, for Windows. So it's, it's, it's kind of it's like having RDP that Windows has, but for Linux, which is really, really nice because that means now you can uh, use the user interface and 
um, you know, maybe maybe you need to do something with that. So there you go. So now you have XRDP installed. Uh, unfortunately, the Unity um, un user interface, Ubuntu's Unity, doesn't really play very nice with uh, with XRDP. It does not like it at all. Um, it does not like GNOME 3 either, the UI. So you need to install a different desktop environment, which is something that's really fun or really great about Linux is that you can just totally, completely change the look and feel of your entire desktop uh, by use, by basically doing this right here. So let's first go ahead and do a sudo apt get update. Let's go ahead and update our packages here. Okay, um, and we'll go ahead and do a sudo apt get install mate core. Uh, yeah, mate, and you should look this up or just follow my thing here. Um, I'll actually put a great guide on how to do this uh, in the comments or in yeah in my uh, comment section below or in the video description below. Uh, just in case you want to follow along, but don't want to have to constantly pause the video. Notification. I think I spelled that right. Damon. Well, I won't be able to find it if I missed it up. Nope, I messed it up. Good thing I caught it. Okay. Did I figure it out? You know what? Just in case. I have it written down, down here. Let's just do that. Okay, so now it's got to download a crap ton of packages. Due to the magic of editing, I am going to go ahead and skip it. Okay, so that was a bit of a wait for me, but hopefully I remembered to edit that out, and that's so not for you. Um, so now we're now that is now the Mate is installed, and that's the next desktop environment is called. It's just Mate. Um, so now I have to configure it. So if we were to still try and use XRDP, it would still go to the gray screen because Ubuntu doesn't know to, or the you know the whatever Linux distribution won't know that it needs to use this other version of um, its user interface. It'll it'll still default to its uh, normal one. So normally the next step is to edit the session x session file um, you'll have to look up exactly how to edit this uh, when you first install it's actually not even created so you'll need to do like a vi or something or a nano if you prefer or maybe well if you're in the user interface uh, if you're if you're already like using terminal or something uh, on the um, actual box itself maybe still vnc in there or connect it directly you could even go as far as to do like maybe a sudo g edit um, but that's not what we're going to do. Instead, we are going to run this much easier command. Um, if unfortunately X session that doesn't work on 16.04 Ubuntu, but anything previous to that, or maybe some of the other operating systems, you'll have to see if it's created. Uh, that would be in the, as you can see, uh, I think it's pretty sure it's in the root directory. So you just do CD. I think I actually just do that. Yeah, so it would normally be in here, um, but since in Ubuntu 16.04, it's not going to be in there. That session that actually won't work. Um, so instead, you edit the uh, edit the uh, Etsy XRDP. Oops, hello, VI Etsy XRDP. There it is. Uh, start. Okay, that file uh, you can see it down here. Sorry, I did it a little quick. That guy right there. You're going to want to edit that file. Um, personally, I, I, so I, you can edit, you edit this and you add in several lines. Now I'm not going to do it manually here. I'm just going to show you where that file was. Uh, instead, we're going to run a much easier way of doing it. And that is this right here. So sudo, and then you add in these lines into the Etsy XRDP start wm.sh file. And so what it does is it just adds those lines. Um, let's just cat that. So see how it added these uh, this line right here into uh, that file. And so now when it starts, it knows to open up mate session as opposed to the default unity. 
and that's it. If if you're in Ubuntu, that's all you have to do. Uh, if you want to use different um, uh, uh, user interfaces, so say you know, like if you want to, uh, I'm not sure which all work. I think KDE works, um, LXDE, all, you know, all different variations. I know Unity and I know GNOME 3 both don't work. You'll just get a gray screen, but it's, you're welcome to try. Um, just install that that other uh, user interface uh, in a very similar method to what you saw me do with Mate, and then you want to add in the appropriate uh, session type here. Um, so instead of using Mate dash session, you would put I don't know whatever it is you you want to use, uh, whatever desktop user interface. But that's it for that. Um, we can now switch on over to remote desktop. Double click and so it's going to see how it just logged in like that. This here we go. Um, we now have a user interface. This is Mate. This is the same tutorial VM and it's great. That's it. That's all you have to do. Um, the nice thing is uh, with Ubuntu, you don't actually have to, since Ubuntu 14.10 actually, um, the new XRDP packages for for Ubuntu uh, actually keeps the same session. Go ahead and like the video and comment below. Let me know what you think uh, on a couple, I'm asking you know several questions. One, was this useful? Do you like this kind of how-to? Uh, this was a very basic thing, um, so I can go into more detailed stuff. Two, what kind of things do you want to learn? What kind of things do you, are you interested in? And three, I guess, you know, do, do you, are you interested in going into these educational type videos, Linux? Uh, I could go into maybe uh, how to install, you know, like TensorFlow for neural networking on uh, Windows and Linux. Go ahead and comment below on just generic things that you're interested in that you kind of want a tutorial about. Uh, preferably not too hardware related because then I'd have to try to find the hardware and I just can't afford you know, I, I can't afford to go and buy a whole bunch of random hardware. Um, so, software related, let's let's figure out some tutorials to do, uh, and maybe some uh, discussions you want to have. Uh, maybe you know if you're if you want to know like if you're interested in specific uh, Ubuntu um, distributions and why they're used over others and what's what's nice about them and you know the pros and cons that kind of stuff. Um, you know, comment below. Let me know what you think. Uh, as far as this video, I think that's all I wanted to put for here. So thank you very much for watching. If you made it this far, you are a saint because it got a little boring there for a minute um, <laughs> with me just rambling on because that's what I do. But I love talking about this stuff. So now I'd love to be able to talk about it live with you guys at some point. Uh, maybe if I'm, you know, maybe I'll do some live streams if I'm working on something that's particularly interesting that I can just, you know, go through and you guys can ask questions and whatnot. Um, or even tell me that I'm doing it wrong and that I'm retarded and you should, I should do it your way. Uh, I'd love to learn from you guys as well. So go ahead. Yeah, like I said, comment below and uh, let me know what you think. This is Marcel with CyberGate Studio, and I will see you in the next one.